Uh, hey everyone, Future David here. I, I gotta keep the, my voice down because I'm, I'm out in the woods. Uh, I'm tracking, you know, these lost cryptids. They're, they're so elusive that they even slip out of the writing challenge. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, so, when we were doing the writing challenge, it turns out there were some entries that somehow never made it into the email address. Uh, they never appeared in the inbox. I never saw them. And uh, that's kind of my bad, but also a technical issue on Google's part. So, um, but either way, either way, these uh, these cryptids, these ones that we were submitted that were lost, but we found out exist later, are so mysterious that we're actually doing another challenge to make sure that they get found, right? It's called the Lost Cryptids Writing Challenge. And now, look, if you sent an entry, but your story was not listed in the winners nor in uh, today's episode, you need to send those stories to our new email. It's creativehorrorwriting at outlook.com. Um, make sure you attach a screenshot to the time code to prove that it was sent with the previous email to midnightmarinera gmail.com before the original cryptic contest deadline. Uh, there will be more information about that in the notes for this episode. But listen, uh, deadline for resubmitting is uh, November 30th at 11.59. Uh, so yeah, uh, good luck. Sorry about the confusion. And hopefully we can get to the bottom of this mystery. Oh, jeez. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to Bum Bumber Book What? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome so. back to the Super Fantastic Book Club, starring me, Background David. Background David. Background David. David. This is my favorite supporting character. <laughs> I'm the supporting character is now the lead character, baby. Oh no! Oh. If you guys have not noticed, it's a, a few days have passed since our last recording. Um, for the uh, episode of. You see the where we announced the winners? No. Yeah. We're we're doing it right after. <laughs> and clearly there in the same space. There hasn't been days of fun activities to wear us out in between our recordings. Look, all so, I know is not like we drank a lot last night. <laughs> I have more of a voice today than I did when we recorded the other one. That's true. I think I probably sound better now. Even though we did karaoke last night. We mm-hmm. did. That's I might not have as much of a voice today. Yeah. That's, that's right. fair. That's why David is in the background. Well, that and he didn't judge the, these stories, technically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hello. Welcome to Undercooked Analysis or Undercovers After Hours. Actually, it's midday. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we're Undercover Midday. I am, uh, I'm Kayla King, and uh, we got David... Uh, Basically, plain monitor of the. I'm just the audio. podcast engineer today. Mm-hmm. That's I'm taking the, a backseat. Yeah, uh, we are once again joined by Eli and Kylie from Animal Fact Files. Hi. Uh, and yeah. and uh, uh, we're gonna read the <laughs> the. So we renounced our winners last time, like I said before, and we're gonna read the other three stories. Uh, that were submitted. As I mentioned, we actually did receive seven, but one of them did not qualify because the story did not fit the qualifications. Uh, yeah, if whoever is listening to this, if you would like us to read your, our, your story, please let us know and let us know if you want feedback and we could read it later on down the road. Um, but for now, we will we'll read the other three stories that were part of the judging process. This one was like, I think it was a very close. It was one. like it was. Mm-hmm. We all kind of had a very scatter shot yeah. for second and third. Yeah. So we really had to like we like did a point system. Yeah. To figure out like which one ended up being first based on the out point allocation, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. It, this one was like one point away. Yes. From being in the top three. Yes. Um, and this one is the Halifax Howler and. Can, can I... If this isn't Beth's story, I'm going to be shook. It's Beth Morton. I knew it! Yeah. I knew it. I <laughs> Beth, stop sitting in places in Canada. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. Yeah, it's a, it's a dead, dead giveaway. giveaway. Right. But I will say, to Beth's credit, Beth has it, been a frequent winner, our placer it's, in, it's our, in our yeah, fighting challenges. That's yeah, true. That's true. Mm-hmm. And actually won the, the last... Uh, uh, 
creepy cooking staff writing challenge with a story about a cryptid. In this case, uh, her take on Sweet Eddie. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's the road right. trip episode, which yeah. you can listen to now on Midnight Marinara. That was a really good episode. It was. Thank you. That was. All right. Uh, so, what order? Or should um, we do it in alphabetical? Oh, yeah, we do that. Well, oh. Uh, what? Or, why don't we go like Eli, me, you? Yeah, let's do that. Because if we do Eli, you, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look, I'm just happy that of the six, I guessed one correct. <laughs> because to reiterate, I guessed all of them were written by Beth. So okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that is true. So one out of six. <laughs> okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Uh, okay. Home to a multitude of waterfront attractions and celebrations, Nova Scotia's capital city is likely Canada's most pedestrian-friendly. Halifax's conveniences and culture can be found within the cozy stroll of a few blocks, whether you're a traveling tourist or a local resident. Whichever you are, we'd love to invite you to explore our welcoming streets. From oysters to jazz to burgers to arts, we can almost guarantee there's a festival for you. Pull up a chair at any one of our waterfront restaurants on our famous boardwalk and enjoy a gorgeous maritime view. At our eateries, you can find a wide variety of cuisines, such as ocean fresh, ocean fresh sushi and fish and chips, zesty Mediterranean kibasa and kibi. Is it kibi? 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 I, what is kibasa? Sure. Kibasa. Ka- is it kabsa? Ka- oh, oh, ka- oh, kabsa. Kopsa I'm not sure. And ki- I don't know what this is. I'm not familiar with this. Classic sizzling burgers and es 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 quites es quits es qu- esquites esquites. How to pronounce food? And tacos with a spicy kick. Of course, no trip is complete without a stop at the famous King of Donair for Halifax's official dish. Everyone in this room is white. I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, because like, like I, I couldn't help you with any of those pronunciations. I, I don't know, and I'm not trying to be like. Uh, I'm I'm looking up cops and kibby to see what that is. I've never had it before. Habs it? Had? I've never had it before. I see. There's a cops a kibbe, and uh, okay. it's an Arabic food. Okay. Um, okay. It looks actually really tasty. Um, there's a. I'm trying to see what it exactly it is. Like, is there a description somewhere? So kibbe is um, uh, a family of dishes made of spiced ground meat, onions, grain, and uh, it's in Middle Eastern. Ah. So, oh, it, okay. It's meat, so I wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you're, like, composed of meat. No! no! <laughs> Don't remind me! <laughs> Even if it doesn't exist, I believe it. I This actually describes uh, this location very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Whatever this absolutely. is. Uh, and then it suddenly changes. Because I like yeah, that... It's like font changes throughout the story. Yeah, this one actually... So there's blue lines underneath. I tried to click. At, these actually don't lead to. Okay. Like, right. So, but I like the idea that this was almost like copy and paste. Yeah. The creature allegedly lurking at the bottom of the Halifax Harbor, better known as the Halifax Howler, has had a little more than a handful of eyewitness testimonies. The most consistent depictions described a long black entity that breaches the water surface. Modern day sightings are often made by those using the ferry from neighboring city Dartmouth for their daily commute or by visitors leaving their dock, the docks via cruise or boot, boot, Boot tour. Boot, boot, boat tour. Everybody got to boot. get their boots on and go on tour. Boot, boot. The boot tour. Well, uh, the boot tour. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that, I might be just channeling in Canada in general because uh, if, right. if you if you heard him say about, it's a boot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Howler has had a multitude of iterations over the decades following its supposed first observation. A beaked worm, a bipedal alligator-like animal with an abnormally long tail, a mermaid or siren, a giant frog with a tadpole tail and large hole between its eyes and down through its jaw. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a sea serpent and a lost whale were all interpretations of the same creature. It wasn't until 1964 that all future sightings coalesced. That year, hosted by Dalhousie Art Gallery's Folk Art Exhibition, local artist Levi Asper, or Levi Asper, unveiled a watercolor painting of what he believed the beast looked like. The harbor's resident depicted a lengthy, wide-eyed, cat-like monster with skyward pointing horns and a seal's muzzle next to... I'm American. Is this George's Island? 
I, there, there's I'm, no apostrophe. So. I, I'm assuming it's George's Island. Are there multiple Georges on this island? It's the island where all Georges come from. Oh, no. No. The if Isle of George. If your name is George, this is where you were born. Mm, yep. <laughs> we, we know your secret, George. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, this illustration solidified itself as the widely accepted appearance, and every sighting since then has matched that description. My right. goodness. And then, uh, which I like this. I like yeah. that it talks about, like, I think this is a really cryptid kind of thing where it's like people for the first time, like, oh, it was this. No, it was this. Yeah. Like, and, but then once somebody has like a visual image, like, that's when it kind of like, that's what it is. I mean, yeah. people have many inter- interpretations of what the chupacabra mm-hmm. looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, no one can really settle on what that thing is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So ah. I think that definitely adds to the cryptid nature mm-hmm. of this story. Yeah. Uh, the this is the the font in the paragraph uh, changes again. Mm-hmm. I met with Brian at the Granville Street seating outside Rudy's, though his clubhouse sandwich and side of fries and can of coke through his oh through his through his clubhouse sandwich and side of fries and can of coke. He told me about his terrifying encounter and his misspelled. <laughs> Yeah, it threw me off, but it's okay. Maybe that's... Disqualified. I think it's on purpose. I think it might be on purpose. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty confident that's on purpose. Yeah, because it, like, caps and, like... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian witnessed the beast last Saturday on the water from his walk to work on the lower water street. At 8.47 a.m., he looked across to Dartmouth and saw a black bump rise over the waves before diving down, just in time, before a tugboat sped by where it was. He described it as furry, but slimy. He knew about the local legend and never thought he'd see it with his own eyes. He was scared. The howler still eludes me, but each interview brings me one step closer to seeing it myself. I think, um, I think the one thing that kind of threw me off with the how this story mm-hmm. is I, I get there's a whole change in thing like a uh, in text and all that, but I'm kind of confused of where are these supposed to be? Like I have an idea, mm-hmm. but like this part, I was like, is this like? on a reddit page or it'd be kind of nice to have like a source or something Mm -hmm. yeah this that was honestly my biggest thing with this story is i i got confused reading it and Mm -hmm. i had to read it like two or three times before i really understood what was going on and like Mm -hmm. let's like that is probably on me like (laughs) no but even then i i I, but I, i agree i feel like i was like who is this like what is this? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like it's supposed to be from many s- different sources. I think so. But I'd kind of like it if it, there was a way to show that it's from different sources. Mm. I mean, if uh, I mean, if if this was maybe be, if this is on a newspaper or something mm-hmm. and it's different articles, maybe that could work. And yeah. then provide this as like another text, kind of like what um, uh, the yeah. uh, the. The frosty one. Yes, did. that one was awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was a smart thing to do. Like basically, so, here's what it would look like on a Reddit page. Yes, uh, yes. And then gave us the actual text just so we can translate it mm-hmm. and read it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that helped build the context for it. Because like otherwise, I'm like, why are all these things together? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, all I gotta say is that I clearly took this this section as a diary. Because I don't know anyone who doesn't write their diary in all caps, purple, <laughs> all caps, purple Comic Sans. Because yeah. are we just not going to address that this part is written in Comic Sans? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's written in Comic it's, Sans? It's, yeah. it's italic comic san- Comic Sans. Oh. <laughs> so. I, I can see Beth doing that, too. Oh, yeah. Oh. Meme Lord. But anyway. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I, I see where, I see where y'all are coming from with the juxtaposition being, uh, confusing without sources for I, each yeah, of the I just things. didn't, I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't know why all of these would exist in the same place. Yeah. 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 Um, so now it's back to the first section, yeah. which is with the, the, like, fake links. Like, like, this is a web page yeah. or something. Where mm-hmm. I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> We wieneries, breweries, and distilleries. <laughs> Very good. Can be found across the city. <laughs> we don't have any of those things in America. I don't know what those are. <laughs> the most famous of which, of course, is Alexander Keith's. So this kind of threw me for a loop. So, mm-hmm. um, 
my cousin is actually named Alex Keith. Oh, and, wow. Like, that, uh, that is her name. It's not Alexander, of course, but... Yeah. Yeah. So that was like a, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, found, <laughs> founded in 1820. It is one of the oldest in America. Uh, glimpse the behind-the-scenes method to their signature brews on their guided tour before sampling some of the historic Stag's Head Pub. B- some at... Before sampling some at the historic Stag's Head Pub. That was not Beth. That was just me skipping words. <laughs> on Saturdays, the sheltered brewery square becomes a bustling farmer's market, giving anyone who visits a taste of Holigonian produce and crafts. Again, Beth, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I, I agree. But I will say, this this is probably also me, mm-hmm. if I don't know how to say something, mm-hmm. I'll just skip it while oh, I'm reading same, it. Oh, same, So, like... Like, if you're reading it in your head without... Without... Not out loud. Yeah. yeah. If I'm not reading it out loud and I don't know how to say it, mm-hmm. I'll just skip the word. Mm-hmm. So, like, sometimes I lose context. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, but that again, that is that's me. Yeah. That's just yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Being a coastal town, many of Halifax's most frequently visited features are located directly by the water, if not in it. You can get a lovely view of the Dartmouth scar- skyline, the Angus L. Macdonald Bridge, and a variety of boats between them, which light up like which light up like starlight once the sun sets. That'd be really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that visual. That actually sounds really pretty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are many popular spots along the shore with outdoor seating for your perfect seaside picnic plans. But don't just enjoy them from afar. Many seafaring vessels offer casual rides for sightseeing and whale watching. And then the text changes. Though not as infinite. The- <laughs> I just can't talk. Boy, it's no. just one of those days. <laughs> Though not as infamous as those taking place in Salem, witch trials are still very common in Canada. Canadian. This is just like this is becoming <laughs> this is becoming like an epidemic here, yeah. Yeah, I know. Hey, Canadian there. provinces. Wait, are still? Oh, we're still. They're not it's still going on. Why did I say R? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's still witch trials going on in Canada. Wait, every, witch, man, every, every Tuesday in Canada, we got the witch trials. Oh, no. <laughs> Some people speculate that the howler uh, originated from a curse spoken by a woman thrown into the channel with stones tied to her feet for her otherworldly sorcery. Oh, wow. However, others contend that it perpetuates negative stereotyping of the French deportee uh, uh, Acadians and the indigenous... Ooh. Oh, I'm so sorry. The Micmac. Micmac? That's how I've always heard it. Okay. Yeah, oh, Mi'kmaq. Micmac people. Yeah. Cryptozoologists pr- propose instead that the Howler lived in the Bedford Basin long af- long before the colonial era. He just lives forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at Nessie. <laughs> no evidence, supernatural or otherwise, has ever been discovered. Okay. Uh, due apparently in part to the distant sightings are usually reported from, no one knows if the creature is hostile. Some argue that its front-facing predatory eyes, sharp horns, and feline teeth in combination with the aggressive manner in which it surfaces would mean it's at the very least territorial. Those that believe in the drowned enchantress claim see it as an omen of loss and misfortune, but an equal number think it's an think it senses tragedy and rises from the depths to warn those directly involved. So, I, see, I like that. It's Aquatic mm-hmm. Mothman. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a Mothman. I, I do like yeah. the, the drowned entran- en- enchantress. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a cool... Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I have to read this like this. What do you email me the after? Right? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I have to read the whole thing like that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Lydia emailed me that after finding my blog and told me about the whale watching tour she took last summer. She was between changing her film to a new role when she saw a dark patch in the water. It had two points on the top of its head and was a dark brown color. She knew it could be none other than the howler itself. Her husband didn't believe her, but she knew someone like me would. She was lucky not to hear it. The howler still eludes me, but I will find it. Nice. You'll never find it if you keep writing Comic Sans. <laughs> I think, like, I, what, something is... It's dark. It was a dark brown dark. color. Black. Dark. Oh, black. Did I say brown? Yeah. Twice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. It's black. Yeah. It's not brown. How dare you? <laughs> the Halifax area is peppered with diverse collection of museums and exhibits. Exclamation point. 
<laughs> Take your kids and learn about oceanic life and how the city is powered at the Discovery Center. I feel like there's always a Discovery Center. Always. In. Step into the shoes of 20th century immigrant at Pier 21. Isn't that a store? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Here. Is it named maybe, after that place? Maybe it's, maybe there, I don't know. But yeah, that's a place. Get hands-on experience with marine biologists at the Sea Turtle Center. Oh, that's cool. Both the Naval Museum and the decommissioned Flower Class Corvette K181, I'm probably, it's probably K181, but who cares, turned memorial will give visitors an expansive look into Canada's involvement with World War II. There was none. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just being a dick. I'm Canada sorry. doesn't exist. Yeah. Beth, stop trying to, to gaslight us into thinking that Canada just, exists. It's just northern North America. Yeah. Yes. Sports fans will love getting a glimpse into the lives of legends like hometown star Sidney Crosby of the Nova Scotia Sport of Hall, Sport Hall of Fame. Experience the Citadel as <laughs> uh, from Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store in Halifax. Yeah. <laughs> Experience the Citadel as it was in 1869 with historical reenactments and ceremonial firings. That's right. You can experience the uh, the horrible tragedy that happened at the Citadel saved by Commander Shepard. <laughs> I will say this is, like, this part specifically is very lifelike. Yes. Like, yeah. it I, totally reads like a brochure. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do really like it. Yeah. It's, it's really well written. See, the parts, like, each separately, it's very well written yeah. and very fascinating. Mm-hmm. I think it's the fact that the mixture together is... It confused me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah her her control of... Um, voice. Voice and tone. Yeah. Is, is really good. Because really these, do, these do feel like three distinct sections. Absolutely. Even without the purple comic sans. <laughs> but, by the way, the, this next paragraph, I was like, if this isn't Beth, I'm done. Uh, Of course, the most known of these is the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. The entire set of the classic Canadians children's program, Theodore Tugboat, (laughs) is preserved behind glass along with all his friends. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Explore a maze of sailboats through the ages and learn about the city's key role in rescuing the survivors of the Titanic's legendary sinking. Many artifacts are also on display from the terrible devastation left in the wake of the Halifax explosion. Ooh. Oh, Theodore. I mean, I do see, like, I I see thematically where things are kind of, like... Like, yeah, interwoven. Interwoven. Yeah. I do see that. Yeah. Again, though, I'm just, like... I think if, if there was sourcing, like, if it would yes. say, from here, from, from the list, mm-hmm. like, at the top or something, gives it, it would be a little more mm-hmm. cohesive, I guess. On December 6th, 1917, the Norwegian ships... The, the Norwegian supply ship... Emo? Is that what we're going to say? E- emo? E- emo? Yeah. emo. It is. E- so it, it wears a I'm lot of black. I'm an emo ship, not conformist as can be. <laughs> the supply ship uses uh, oil to, as black eyeliner. Yes. <laughs> the Norwegian supply ship Emo collided with the starboard side of the French munitions vessel Mont Blanc. Sorry, that's not right. No, that's right. Okay. It is Mont Blanc. Uh, there's uh, Mont Blanc actually is a, um, they also have a set of pens. Like Oh, okay. So that's how it's correct. The ship ignited, and the crew left it abandoned to drift ablaze towards the Halifax sh- shoreline. What followed was at the time the largest man-made explosion ever created, unsurpassed until the invention of the atomic bomb. Combined with the force of the resulting tsunami, the blast leveled a square mile of both Halifax and Dartmouth, throwing ship, throwing ship debris nearly three miles and, and was heard 60 miles away. 2,000 people were killed by this horrible accident, and a further 6,000 were injured. This is unrealistic. Why are they using miles? <laughs> Fair. Well, uh, when was this well, written? Because they might have still used miles at that point. Was it not always... Was it kilometers? No, bro. I it, it Okay, you know what really fucked me up was learning that the British... Okay, so miles... Like, our system is dumb. Yes. The, the, the imperial standard is dumb. Yes. The British understood that because they invented it, and then they stopped using it. Oh. It's the the reason we use it is because the 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 British Empire used it, and even they were like, "This system fucking sucks. I'm not using this anymore." <laughs> <laughs> so America being the rebel s- s- son that it is. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I don't know if Canada ever used Imperial, and if they did, when they stopped. 
So oh, okay. it might be that in 1917 they might have still been using it. Or we could presume that this is written for filthy Americans. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to do that for us, Beth. <laughs> uh a very small handful of survivors reported Wait, hearing No. It's Wait, Taylor's turn. My turn? It's your did, turn? Did you just... I just read. Oh. Oh, you did. That's right. I'm sorry. A very small handful of survivors reported hearing an awful wailing sound 20 minutes before Mont Blanc's uh, detonation. By the way, it, Mont Blanc is just the name of the brand. They're, the ship Mont Blanc doesn't have a set of pens. I just realized yeah, I yeah. said that. I got what you meant. It's all good. Yeah. They're very expensive pens, too. Uh, this first sighting of the Halifax Howler sparked the initial debate over the creature's motivations for human contact. Dropped manslaughter charges against the French crew due to lack of evidence inspired the claims that it caused the crash, while the opposition, while the opposition argued that it was a warning call. Skeptics believe the entire situation to be a combination of victims looking for a scapegoat and trauma impacting the grinding noise of the two ships colliding in their memory. There are still those who believe it's in its existence to this day. Um, okay, so the final section is, again... Okay, it's in the comic sans, but it is not yelling anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, the first part's yelling. I think it's just... A loving memory! <laughs> oh my god. Douglas Marshall Bailey! <laughs> oh my god. 1955 to 1998. And then, and then it, it composes itself. Aww. The blog. This blog is preserved in memory of recent of recently departed Douglas Bailey. I know how much documenting his quote unquote research meant to him, and although I don't fully understand it, any future guests should know that he's no longer with us. Oh. Oh shit! It's pretty fascinating, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. He was a good, honest man, though he was very easily persuaded by what my mother not so lovingly referred to as honeypot theories. He cared deeply for his family. I'd like to believe he at least tried to raise me right. The only thing he was more passionate for was his love for fishing and boating. And maybe because of that, he often tried to combine the two. I don't know what happened out on the water so many years ago to convince him that this monster existed. But even to the very end, he tried to prove it to everyone else. I hope you and the sister I never knew are now resting at peace. Oh. With love, Paul Bailey. See, I get that. So... I forgot that that's probably what clicks it all together, that these are a set of uh, posts, mm-hmm. or like... That Douglas Marshall Bailey wrote? Yeah, but that could have been presented a little better. I don't know. Is it, is it better to be surprised by that, or... I... Like, by this ending? I mean, mm-hmm. I still feel like this is still a post from that blog, so like mm-hmm. it would still be okay to have the source. I yeah. Think. Yeah. I... I okay. I feel dumb because what? I don't know when it says I hope you and the sister I never knew. Like yeah, the, par- I know. the paragraph before that. No, 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 no. The paragraph right before that. Uh, that first sentence. I don't know what happened on the water so many years ago to convince him it existed, but he tried to prove it to everyone else. But I was I, like, the sister died, but then. But like, literally, I don't know who, why would you not know your sister yeah. because she was dead. But. Did, when did How she did die? she die? Like as a, as a fetus? No, well, no. I think she died. Did in... she die helping him try to find the Halifax Howler? I don't. But then it... why wouldn't you know her? Yo, no, I don't think it's even that. I can't find out either. Okay, That's so Paul point. Bailey says, mm-hmm. "I hope you, and the sister I never knew," mm-hmm. which makes me think that it's probably not Douglas. It could be Douglas. Mm-hmm. But. I just don't understand who the sister like. Okay, Beth, comment below what is happening. Like, well, this, this confused. Okay. I was like, I yeah. feel like I'm supposed to have an oh shit moment, and yeah. I'm just like, I can't find it I, either. I don't okay. understand. No, here's here's what I think it is. the The section before that talks about the Halifax explosion. Yeah. And how the sailors had different interpretations of what what happened. Yeah. Um. And then in that paragraph before they mention the sister, they say, I don't know what happened out on the water so many years ago. So I think it is, it's that, uh, Douglas, the guy who ran the blog, had a sister. The sister died on a boat and Douglas presumed that it was the Halifax Howler. And then Paul is, uh, Douglas's brother, but Paul was too young at the time 
or what maybe wasn't even born yet to have ever met okay the sister. okay well, I, get the I think that's what it was. i think the, uh, yeah i thought paul was his son that because there could be two, yeah. That, that I, could be. Didn't he say it's a? My mother, not so lovingly for I mean, the uh, honey pot like, theories. Uh, by what my yeah. mother not so lovingly for Okay, he, he's that's fair. He's trying to raise me right, so this is his son. Okay, yeah. so that's his son, and okay. he had a sister. He, they, they had a daughter, and she died, and oh, then Paul. Where's was the born. hints of that? Which part? Is it Lydia? But Lydia was married. See, this is the confused. I, like if if Lydia's married, I think that's why we need sourcing. Yeah, we, I we, just I'm just lost. Yeah, we need some sourcing. We have to go back. That, we need some we sourcing. Gotta go back, where, Kate. Uh, we got. We need we gotta sourcing go. from where these places are found. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I think that would help out a little I, better. I think it would. If if the blog post, because I'm not sure if these blog posts are, are Douglas's blog posts. I think or? they are. Yes. I think they're all Douglas except for the last one, which then, is Paul. Then who's yes. Lydia? Who's yeah? That's yeah, it. and uh, like. What does that have to do with the sister? Yeah, I think is Lydia connected to the sister. That there needs to be a bit of clarity. Yeah. I think uh, it just needs. It, it's still like everything here is well written. It is, but the connection needs to be a bit stronger mm-hmm. between these. Yeah, we uh, we could also just all be very dense. Yeah, it's very possible. Like maybe yeah. everyone listening is like, oh, but, but I, mean, I totally got it. But I mean, if you did get it, please let us know. Yeah, because maybe we we're not getting it, but. I mean, but overall, this is still good writing. Yes, it's still really good. It just was like, it just didn't quite click for us. I think. Yeah, I feel it, I feel like there is something we're missing, but mm-hmm. agreed. But still, very well written. Mm-hmm. Very well done. Thank you, Beth. Thank uh, you. So the next story uh, is uh, Ethylene Oxide and the Swamp Clown. Oh boy. Uh, what? This one is fascinating. This is a, this actually did give me a, quite a chuckle. Uh, I, I mean, I think this one's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the... Who wrote this one, David? Uh, this is our old friend Daniel Scammell, a.k.a. Urkelbot666. Hey! Okay. Thanks, Urkelbot. Good job. Thank you. Proud of you. This actually made us laugh. I will yeah. say, out of all of them, this one, like, this stood like out. Yeah. As it's, like, own thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... So I say, well done for that. Yeah. It was iconic. Yeah. But between all of them. Yeah. Um, so, wait, who read last? Uh, I think that you was did. me. I think so, it's Eli. Uh, I yeah. think it's back to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is Ethylene Oxide and the Swamp Clown. I'm not entirely sure how we ended up in our, <laughs> in our underwear out here. Same. It, it just kind of <laughs> happened somewhere. I mean, we're all in our under- underwear <laughs> right now. <so. laughs> Uh, just kind of happened somewhere between the sixth and seventh pull off that off that bottle Teddy brought. The water samples we're meant to be gathering and testing are quickly being forgotten. Most times, a job like this is boring and mindless, but sometimes you end up drunk and half nude, making out on a marsh boat with your coworker, your coworker who's maybe twenty years younger than you. Jesus, where's that bottle? <laughs> That actually, like, reading that, I was like, okay, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, th- I thought that, too. hmm Should I fill in the chart before we forget? He asks. Yeah. Or do you want me to... Yeah, you could go. Yeah, it's... Yeah, sure. Just copy whatever the last reading was for the next bunch. My speech slurs a little, and I draw deeply from the bottle again. It's good scotch. I can't imagine he's got enough taste to buy it himself. He seems more like a White Claw guy. Probably took it from his parents' liquor cabinet. Don't copy the exact numbers, I say. Mix it up a little. He starts erasing the entries he just made. Dumbass. Sexy dumbass. <laughs> I look out over the swamp, my head swimming pleasantly. Across the banks of the... In the... Uh, of the... Uh, bah, bah. Uh-huh. Well, welcome back to Caleb continues to slur... <laughs> is now slurring their words, so... <laughs> Across the banks of the oh. channel, eyes glint in the moonlight. Frogs, raccoons, skunks, foxes, probably. Luckily, it's too late in the season for mosquitoes. I wouldn't be caught dead out here without long sleeves in July, no matter how much scotch you got in me. Tonight's chilly, though, especially because I'm not wearing a shirt. Christ, what am I doing? Uh, that is true. So, as someone who did work in Florida during the summer, I, I wore long pants every night. Uh-huh. Didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I wore, you have to. I wore shorts once, and I regretted it. Mm-hmm. Like, I ne- next day, I was like, Oh, look, 
I'm covered in mosquito bites. Oh, let me shave mm-hmm. my legs. Oh, look, I'm bleeding. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. They're rude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sees me staring out into the darkness. What do you think is out there? He asks. A little bit of everything. <laughs> he looks at me blankly. Frogs. Mostly frogs. <laughs> Because they're they're supposed to be drunk, right? Yeah. Frugs. So, okay. I think Frugs. I think our Frugs. our narrator is definitely drunk. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Love if, it. I don't know if he is. I think he's I dumb. Know, know, know. I think the coworker's just dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can go one more. Right? Yeah. Oh, frogs are cool. My God, this man has the brain capacity of a cabbage. <laughs> However, he also has the body of an Olympic swimmer, and those cute freckles across the bridge of his nose. And judging from how his boxers fit. Come sit over here, I say, beckoning him. He brings the clip he brings the clipboard, and when he sits, I take it and place it on the floor of the boat. We kiss. His tongue tastes sweet in the stale swamp air. Relax, you're too tense. For a terrifying moment, I think he's going to say, A wigwam and a teepee, and I'm going to have to drown him. <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't. I rub his shoulders and he starts to ease up. He has freckles on his shoulders, too, and I want to know what they taste like. Sexy. (laughs) His muscles flex in my palms. I heard something. He whispers. It's a swamp at night. You're going to hear all kinds of shit. I work my hand down his smooth skin, sinking my fingers under the waistband of his shorts. Kinky. I wish you'd relax a little and pay attention to me. I say, grasping him now. Hang on. What's that? Hi. That's your... No, not that... Get a light. <laughs> Sighing, I turn, I turn and fish a flashlight out of the trunk. I now hold a long, round object in each hand. I turn... <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite line. Yes, that's, that that's is, good. That is so, like, the kind of writing that is just, like, so perfectly descriptive without yes. being any... Mm-hmm. Like, you're completely avoiding saying anything that doesn't need to be said, but right. giving all the information you need to the give. The humor here is on point. It's so good. Anyway, um, where was I? Okay. I know, I now hold a long round object in each hand. I turned one, I turned one on easily. The other is giving me more difficulty than I had. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There, he points and I shine the light. Where are we? <laughs> On the near bank. There you go. On the near bank, there is motion. It's a line of box turtles all walking single file out of the water, head to tail. They remind me of marching elephants at the circus in a giggle. Oh shit, maybe we should actually be testing the water, I say. <laughs> I, this may, reminded me of uh, Over the Garden Wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. You can come out, my turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing that, he asks. The turtles on shore walk and pace in a large and perfectly round loop. Who cares? Behind us, a rush of bubbles erupts from the muck. What was that? It's just marsh gas, I say. It dislodges from the mud sometimes. It'll pass. But it doesn't. The swamp around us starts boiling with gas. But there's no familiar scent of organic rot. This odor is sweet. It reminds me of cotton candy. Powdered sugar. Why does it smell like the fair, Teddy asks. Why is there so much of it? Is it this normal? Of course. Uh, of course it's normal. This happens all the... Ouch. Ease up. I've unconsciously been gripping him harder and harder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, sorry. Around us, the sweet gas continues to boil upward. <laughs> it blows through the hollow reeds growing in the swamp, making them whistle. They sing louder and louder, sounding like slide whistles and flutes, and the splashing water is like huge cymbals crashing. It's a carnival of ear-splitting music. That's a good description. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Bats and flying squirrels flit and zoom over us, some p- plummeting drunkenly into the seething bog. Same. <laughs> <laughs> On shore, the turtles now lie motionless in a series of rings. Teddy's panicking. He should have had much more. He should have had more scotch. Silty water splashes into the boat, soaking us and our equipment. I shine the light into the test- onto the testing strips, which have turned from s- slate gray to a shocking hot pink. Well, that explains it. Question. Is silty a word, or is it supposed to be salty? Uh, no, like, like silty, silt. like, uh, um, Grit. like, yeah, gritty, oh, okay. like, uh, turbulent, turbid. You got, know? Yeah. got it, got it. Yeah. Let's go, I said, grabbing a pole and plunging it in the water. What's happening? He grabs the other pole. 
uh, it's got to be leached from the molding plant on the hill. Ethylene oxide. A shit ton of it. How did it even get something knocks into the underside of the boat, nearly flipping us? Before we can pull to the shore and escape the toxic gas, something rises out of the mud in front of us. It's a tall pillar of glistening slime and roots, coated with fuzzy white fungus. Hiraceum? Lion's mane? Atop the column of wet, writhing muck grows a cluster of what could only be, what could only be Sphagnum capillifolium. Red peat moss. It's dense and brighter than I've ever seen in this swamp before. What's that? Shouts Teddy, coughing now. It's just a tree trunk, I say, knowing how inadequate an explanation this is. A stump the gas dislodged. That's a fucking clown, he yelps. <laughs> and then I see it. The fungus tracing silvery platforms. Of, no, patterns, not platforms. Wow. <laughs> Up the trunk. The red moss growing from the top. Even a clump of moss that looks like a big round nose in the moonlight. Water around us stops bubbling abruptly, and the thing, a tree trunk, it has to be a tree trunk, looms Swain, looking as drunk as I felt two minutes ago. Um, I think this is the point where it was like, mm, that kind of lost me, because I get what the story is going for, it just doesn't feel very cryptid. cryptid. Yeah. 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 I think that's I, I ultimately that. what made this story not be in the top mm-hmm. Three. Yeah. Because it's very well it's written. Very well written. Oh no, I'm, I'm laughing. I yeah. was laughing my ass off and mm-hmm. I'm like going through, I'm like, this is great. Yeah. And then yeah. as I like, started to describe what the, this quote unquote mm-hmm. cryptid is, yeah. it still fits. It doesn't, it just doesn't feel. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just doesn't quite, I mean, it, it works. Um, I think uh, I have a, a couple suggestions about how it could have changed, but mm-hmm. um. Well, I, I'll just say, I think something that could have been good would be, like, because we see Teddy panicking. Uh-huh. It, mm-hmm. Like, him mentioning, like, something about how he's heard about something from yeah, this area. Yeah. You know, that really could have helped create the more cryptid atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, where we have, like, a little bit of, like, oh, my friends told me a story about this place. And, like, that you have to have the narrator kind of try to calm him down from the story. And that's why he's so tense. Um, at the beginning, something mm-hmm. like that, just to kind of like, le- like lead us into the idea that there's probably something here, mm-hmm. or there could be something here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the the tricky part with these contests is like people think, well, wasn't my is it because my story wasn't good enough? It's not just the writing because mm-hmm. it's usually how well does it fit? Does it fit exactly? Right, of course, yeah. The of premise course. we're trying to address. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, um, for example, when we did the uh, Disney. Uh, Disney creepypasta writing contest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We read this one story, and it's so well written, and it's so good. And Abysme even read it and was like, "This is like the best story." Well, I don't understand, but it didn't fit that Disney yeah. mm-hmm. creepypasta story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really liked it. It mm-hmm. just didn't really. Uh, it just didn't fully fit the what we were looking for in the yeah. contest. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's the idea. Of, like when. If you guys ever want to enter a con, one of these contests, like if you're listening to this and like, oh, I want to try and enter, it, you also have to consider, uh, consider what the premise is. Right. Too. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, because that plays a role. Like the writing here is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to pick this one, but I was like, but it doesn't really give the cryptid vibe. That's, no, that's it, what I it thought, does too. work. It does fit. Like, you, it can still be a cryptid. Yeah. Right? Like, it does work, but you could have really amped up the cryptidness, the, cryptidness, the cryptid nature of the mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. And that really would have been what sold it. So yeah. it has nothing to do with the writing. The writing is really good. It's very yeah. fun. The voice here is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, who is next? Sorry. Uh, I think it's me. Oh, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck this, Teddy says. Mm-hmm. Fuck this, fuck this, fuck this! <laughs> And he scrambles to the rear of the boat and pulls the cord to start the outboard motor. Fucking clowns. Fuck this. Don't, you'll... Ethylene oxide is flammable in high concentrations. I know this. He doesn't. The engine turns over, igniting the gas and sending a plume of bright flame into the air. It diffuses and burns out in a, manner of se- in a matter of seconds, but not before searing and blistering Teddy's poor, beautiful body. He collapses onto the floor of the boat, moaning, his flesh hissing. The flash washes out my vision, makes everything look blue, and I can, but I can still hear it. In the water, the thing makes a chuckling sound, and air escapes from whatever veins or roots run through it. 
High-pitched, wet, suckling giggles echo into the now-silent marsh. The animals are all hiding or dead from the toxicity of the air. The fucking thing is laughing at us. It's just a stump or a bunch of roots and moss, but... Teddy is groaning, and I start to pull us back to the shore opposite that bobbing thing that I wish Teddy hadn't called a clown. As the boat clunks softly into the rocks and mud, the clown sinks serenely back into the murk, chuckling as it descends. Bubbles float from where it sunk, and the sweet scent, like candy apples and snow cone syrup, is fading. I do like these descriptions a lot. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. They're the, good. The, the imagery yeah, in, in the really story good. is really, really good. Mm-hmm. I dig through the pockets of my pants for my phone. It's soaked and won't turn on. Shit. No sign of Teddy's phone either. Or his pants. Probably floating somewhere out in the muck. I pull on my clothes and help Teddy into what I can find find of his. Two socks and a single shoe. <laughs> I leave uh, it just says a shoe sorry I leave him shirtless I don't know if I ought to but his chest is pretty raw come on buddy I tell him gently helping him to his feet it hurts bad he says <laughs> oh Teddy <laughs> I poor, know poor let's, himbo I know let's get moving maybe my phone will come back to life but we've got to get the ro- get to the road right away uh Okay, don't uh, don't tell anyone about how how I'm scared of clowns, okay? Oh, honey, I <laughs> lightly kiss the less burned side of his face. He stinks like singed hair. His long, sexy eyelashes gone now. He, there's no clown. You were just hallucinating from the gas. It was just a stump. That's all. I wish I was telling the truth. The mud sucks at our feet on the shore. It's going to be a long night. Before we start the slog out of the woods, I grab the scotch from the marsh boat. No point in letting that go to waste. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Again, well written. Very well written. Yeah. yeah. Made me laugh quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yes. It just, um, like I said, it just didn't feel as cryptid. Yeah. Yes. It yes. didn't kind of like build up to that. Mm-mm. Like you said, if if there had just been like some some backstory or like some lore or something about you know, stuff being cited in this area mm-hmm. or something prior. Yeah. I feel like that would have really driven it home, yeah. you know? I mean, I can I can see it. Like, you can make the argument this is, like, the initiation yes, of absolutely. a cryptid. But then again, I would want more information at the tail end mm-hmm. talking about how other people have gone to try to see the clown and, the clown. you know, they see different things. Yes. Or, you know, like... Give it a little bit more on, I, like, either this is the first time anyone's ever seen it, and now people want to go try and find it themselves, mm-hmm. or, like, this person tries to go back and find it, or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, like, is unable to, or, like, it looks different, or something like that. Right. Um, or, like we said uh, uh, prior, to give it a little bit more mm-hmm. backstory. Yeah. I think that would have helped solidify it more as a cryptid story, rather than just, like... This is a crazy shit that happened to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Um, we have one more. The last one we'll be reading is The Drudge. Uh, who wrote this one, David? I love this one. By the way, uh, there's a lot of good... There's artwork that come came with it. Oh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. Um, it's very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, I, I, I like it. that there's... Uh, I like the... Especially the one picture that has, like... The collection notes on top of the um, a map, and then it it almost looks like this has a cryptid core feel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is credit to Plagueis. Plagueis. Oh, Plagueis. All right, thank you, Plagueis. Thank you, Plagueis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Kayla's turn. Yeah. It'll open. Oh, it can't. Why is it not opening? Oh the no. Drudge. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. The yeah. Drudge. <laughs> Once upon a time, in rural northeast America, a figure roamed the pine. I sound like I have an accent that may- comes from nowhere, and I don't know why. <laughs> that accent is called a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> hangover, 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 hangover. <laughs> Walking upright, with two arms and legs as tall as the highest trees, long thin arms reaching a limp to its calves. Wandering sites of old industry, from sheds to quarries and mills... Slipping through forests, avoiding streets, led on by the enchantment of everything derelict. A five-finger scrapyard claw dangling from the fleshy stump of its right arm. The other, a blackened exhaust pipe spouting hot white flame, a controlled burn dangling from the left. 
Um, to do first sighted in 1987 in Vermont near an old, near an old gravel pit by a group of hunters feeding in the night, Jackson Moore and the hunters held at once in horror. Wires sprouted from joints and worn muscles and rusted motors all over the body connected to an engine of cogs, gears, wheels, and fluid on its upper back, thin skin, the color of rust. Hunched down low over a dilapidated and overgrown dump truck, ripping it apart and melting it down piece by piece and raising the scrap to its mouth. Uh, Its face, wide blackened lips clenching five thick sharp gears of an old scrap metal shredder in like dentures, two caged searchlights for eyes, shooting beams of dirty yellow light wherever it looked. Noticing the interrupters, it stopped. It strode off in the wrong direction as they stood, petrified. The whir of its engine warped into a desperate whimper. All I found tells of whirring, gentle whirring and clanking as it nears, like the sounds of a bustling factory floor. 1989, Maine. 1993, New Hampshire. I saw it in 2002 at the granite quarries of... Is it Bar, Vermont? Yeah. Uh... I don't think it meant to find the interrupters. So. Once upon a time, in rural Northeast America, a figure roamed the pine. The one Jackson Moore and the hunter saw, and all the others, standing there, sleeping, crows picking and perching on, like it was just another tree, sleeping in the day and looking for food at night. I don't think it was hurting anyone. And then there's a, there's a footnote. Oh, the footnote says, The Drudge was the subject of a popular protest song written and sung by American workers during the Great Railroad Strike of 1877. The lyrics tell the story of a poor, malnourished factory worker who was fired by his foreman in the middle of winter. In his desperation, the worker returned to the factory that night and broke in to eat scrap metal and machine lubricant, eventually transforming into the Drudge. I really like this one. I like this one. I, too. I, I, I I love this one. Um, I think that's what made part of what made this so hard to to pick. Mm-hmm. I um, I think like this one it has a different kind of vibe to it. There's lots of it's kind of almost it's, like more like poetry. It is poetry. Yeah, it, it rhymes um, like every, each verse rhymes. And I mean, I I this one really stuck out to me as well. Um, like it kind of stuck with me. It's mm-hmm. very visual. Yes. I get a very good sense of what this thing looks like. Yes. Yeah. But I definitely had like like nitpicky Kylie oh, no. moments. Yeah. Oh, no. Where I'm like, it has lights for eyes uh-huh. and fire coming out of its arm. So like I feel like that would draw attention. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. also very tall. Um as again, feel I feel like that would draw attention. So mm-hmm. I feel like the chance for sightings should be higher. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just me being nitpicky. Yeah. yeah. Like trying to think like if this thing was real and if it was around at night and you were in the woods mm-hmm. and you saw like lights yeah. way up in the trees. Right, right. I mean, that's kind of, it, it's, that's you, interesting and fascinating, but like, I feel like more people would have maybe seen it. Usually but. cryptids tend to be a bit more stranger or add like uh darker like you have reason to not be seen as often mm-hmm. and usually have a local legend attached to it like this is a good kind of local legend yeah. attached yeah mm-hmm. it does it has a really good local legend mm-hmm. but um and i do like the poetry aspect but i'm mm-hmm. I, I i'm with you there um i felt like it i don't know the, to me when i was reading i'm like this feels very a little too descriptive for okay okay let me rephrase that it it felt like very detailed to the point where it's like this seems to have because usually with a cryptid you don't really know too much about it. Yeah, that's fair. That's and, very fair. And for the most part, like this sounds like very a little too detailed mm-hmm. for as though someone has absolutely seen it and knows exactly what it looks like in detail. Yeah, to a T. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it says I saw it in yeah. twenty or. Uh, 2002. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, I agree. Like, usually things like this, especially things that seem to not want to be seen, mm-hmm. it's a very fleeting thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I've definitely experienced that. Even bird watching, like, I've seen a bird at the bird feeder and I've been like, oh, what is that bird? And I, like, 
grab my phone to try to figure out what it is and the bird's already gone and yeah. I don't yeah. have a single detail saved other than like, oh, it had right. like a black stripe on its eye. Mm-hmm. Right. Not it had a black stripe on its eye and three red stripes on its wing and a white stripe around its eye. Like, mm-hmm. Well, given that this is apparently drawing from a, a legend from 1877... Or you know, a story from eighteen seventy seven. I could looked. Be... I, I think that's made up. I, I was. Tr- I was thinking that was made up. Oh, I mean, I, fig- I, I figured that was made up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I looked because I looked it up to see if like if this existed. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything. Okay. About yeah. this. The credit where credit is due, though, the fact that it made you look it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah very. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll give yeah. you props for what, that. What were you saying? I was gonna say, given that the story is supposed to be that old, or at least the origin of it, mm-hmm. it could be that this is like literally all the information that there is about it over the course of 150 years. It would have to be oral, though, because at the very mm-hmm. top it says first sighted in 1987. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, all of... The, I see what you're saying. Like, the they would have had to, like, make up the monster. Right. And then that making up of the monster be, like, what made the monster? Like, it would have mm-hmm. to be, like, paranoia agent almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. the description of the monster makes it. Otherwise... Okay. I see what you're saying. Because, like, with the other stories, like, uh, you yeah. got you got Beth's story where um, it's, like, there's been different descriptions. Uh-huh. It's just been solidified by this mm-hmm. artist yeah. who mm-hmm. just kind of came up with his own idea, and that's what solidified it, which mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's believable. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the... And then our, some of the winners, um, like, our, our first place one, there's there's description about the car- this uh, creature, but that's because... They've now seen it and they've got been, to study they've it. They've been, yeah, wanting to study it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And even then, it's like they don't, it, the full details aren't there and they're not as detailed as this is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this is a, this one is a little too like, I feel like you had an opportunity to like, you had like five or like a good 10, 15 minutes to look at this or, yeah, like you would yeah. have had to have been like sitting in like a, a deer stand or something like, and mm-hmm. it just walk through, and you it doesn't know you're there. Even even like the rusted thing that or like the rusted the car, skin. the car one, mm-hmm. or what, oh, like, yeah. like the car one. I mean, there's some the descri- Detroit Harvester. Yeah, the yeah. Detroit yeah. Harvester. There's some descriptions, but it's still just like even then you're you can't really see if you fully trust the yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That, that and like I feel like I can't a hundred percent visualize that the Detroit yeah. Harvester. Yes. Whereas with this, I'm like, I can exactly see what it what I'm Looks thinking. Like, of. Yeah. Which, mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, of course, there are pictures included, but like just reading the story on its own, mm-hmm. I can visualize this yes. very yes. easily. Yeah. Whereas with like Beth's story, it's very ambiguous what exactly the cryptid is. Yes. So. Yeah. But it's still good. It's still I good. I still really, really yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah. 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 It, like, it definitely reminded me of like where I grew up. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. And I like the I, again. I I like that all of these had very, very, very distinct styles. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I like, well, I told him I like the fact that we said write it however you want in whatever style you yeah. want. Yeah. And I love yes. that people ran with Actually that. Yeah, that. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Very well done to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so for much participating. for participating. It was so much fun. Yeah, I I loved writing these contests. Uh, there definitely will be another one in the future. I would love to get them involved again. Mm-hmm. Are you guys involved again? We could probably go through Cinema Nippon. I don't know how Ooh, that would go about. We could but... have people t- uh, do yokai stories or something. Oh, that'd be, cool. be kind of cool. Yeah. Make up your like, own yokai. Almost oh. more of an urban legend type thing. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. We'll, we'll, d- we'll discuss that for the future yeah. and figure that out. But yeah, I would sure. have, that would sound like a lot of fun. Let us know what you think. You yeah. heard it here first, folks. If you want it, we'll we, we. score it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let us know if this interests you. Slide into our DMs. Yep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if you like what you hear, uh, um, please check us out at creativehorror.com. You can check out our other podcast there, as well as uh, Creative Horror on the YouTube channel. Uh, you just type a creative horror on YouTube and you'll find us. Uh, if you like these guys, or actually check out these guys. These guys are awesome. I mean, they have the animal. <laughs> we're right now we're joining forces with them for Animal Fact Files, which is a great set of videos that mm-hmm. um, describe different animals. Uh, you do this three times a week, or usually, uh, yeah, we usually post three times a week. We're going to be getting back to that schedule very shortly. Yeah, mm. maybe even by the time this goes up. Maybe, yeah. 
Uh, real quick note, when you guys did the drudge, did you look at the illustrations that came with yes. it? Yes, yes absolutely. I did. They're very cool, aren't they? Yeah, I like very, very cool. Again, I like I said, the the one where it's on top of the map, I very cryptid feel. Yeah, uh, I very. love it. I love that look, that style. Um but also check out Cinema Nippon, uh, where they uh, your other channel where you uh, discuss uh, Japanese movies and yeah. go into detail on them. Yeah, Please. go go watch them. Go do it. Go check them out. Check out either of those. Subscribe. Yeah. D- Smash that subscribe. <laughs> Cinema Nippon is in a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah. Um, but they'll be coming back soon. We just yeah. As you all know, our life kind of got crazy. Yeah, life and, has been insane. And we were not able to record for six months. Right. Yeah, so. they're, yeah the, their internet, they don't they didn't have internet for a while. Yeah. It's been a few months yeah. that we have it's, not had internet. It's been a whole thing. It's, so, we had to come but you all know what? Way. It's fine. Yeah, That's, we had to come all the way to California yeah, to just get just to the get internet. internet. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, best internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that, uh, that uh, bougie California internet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but thank well, you, everyone, yeah, and so thank, much, and, and thank you, uh, David yeah, and Kayla, for having, for having us. us. This was absolutely. awesome. It was so much great. fun. Yes, it was absolutely. Set background, David. Yeah, Come yeah. back and visit soon. We will. Good. Hurry back. Wait, <laughs> that's not crippity crip crip. <laughs> the 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 the, str- the struggle continues. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good evening, intrepid listeners. This is the Pasta Shade, the host of Midnight Marinara, and this podcast is part of CreativeHorror.com, a network of podcasts and creators working together to build a constructive community of horror fans. For more content like this, visit us at CreativeHorror.com. Ha, 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 ha.